some spicy flesh. And you know, I'm all about that drama, the drama llama Obama. So I love drama and right now in Magic there isn't any. I'm just kind of like behaving. I actually picked up this Black Lotus. Beautiful Black Lotus. Um, it is the only unlimited I have. Uh, my other Black Lotuses, my Beta and Alpha, they are in a storage lock box. This one I'm actually gonna trade. I'm gonna try to trade it away. So I'm gonna put it in my trade binder. I'm obviously going to try to trade down into maybe more Power 9, maybe more dual lands. Uh, it really depends on who has a good offer for me. Maybe some sealed supply. I actually would trade this for another card game. So I'm open to that idea as well. All right, Flesh and Blood drama. Let me summarize it. So Kitchen Table TCG is one of the biggest flesh and blood proponents I've ever seen. They make these finance charts about all the different sets. Very interesting watch. I've been watching them since he sold off his magic collection to fund buying flesh and blood. I wanted to see how long people would regret do selling their Ma magic the gathering collection, which a lot of them did. A lot of them made videos about it. And many of them still use magic the gathering in their titles even today, because that's the only way that they would get views. Um, this guy is one of the largest. I mean, I think maybe organically the largest so open boosters, obviously, with Edwin Unhinged Magi, right? They made Unhinged Magi. And obviously, we have Rudy. Rudy Chan is in a whole nother stratosphere compared to them because he literally saved Flesh and Blood. I don't make any argument. So there are three special entities in Flesh and Blood in America. Channel Fireball, um, I believe Star City Games, and then Rudy. The reason Channel Fireball, which is now acquired by TCG Player, and we'll see what that relationship pans out to be. Will it be the same? Will it be better? Will it be something different? Um, and Star City Games, they have all, they do all the big events. And if you do a big event, you absolutely cannot buy from a distributor. You need to print direct to you because otherwise you would not have supply for the event. And what if one of the distributors you know, wanted to, you know, hell, oh, I want a $500 a box now because you're having an event. They could hold the event hostage, right? And then there's not enough product for the event. There's not, if the event fails, it looks very bad. Therefore, these two parties make a lot of sense why they need a special, I would just call it a special relationship with the game. Rudy Chan's the other. And the lore, as it goes, was when they printed their version of Alpha, nobody cared, no one bought it. The game was dead. Then they struck a deal with Rudy. And Rudy has direct printing, so he's not even paying a distributor, in my opinion. Uh, he's just getting the same allotment, the same printing as a Channel Fireball, as a, you know, as these people hold it, hosting a, a Star City Games, hosting the event. So those are the three special entities, if you will. Um, at least according to a video I saw from Flukenbox, I didn't actually know Rudy was a special entity. I assumed that he was buying it the same way that a regular store is buying it. But now this kind of makes more sense, right? The whole Rudy pays millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't think that's true uh, for towards the game. I think the game owes him because they would not be around without him and therefore he gets his own cards, he gets his own play mats. I really find it hard to believe what he's saying when he's saying that he's paying money because this is not how influencer marketing works, right? This is the opposite. Plus he had them buy the balls, right? Without him, there's no game. So I'm sure they signed a contract. If he was smart, he would get them to sign a contract, maybe a 10 year contract, 20 year contract even. And because at that point they would sign anything. It's like doing a deal with the devil, your game is dead. I can make your game really popular. I can turn some of my Magic the Gathering base onto your game. I can convince them to sell their reserve list cards. I can convince them to sell their Alpha Lotuses. I can convince them to sell their Magic collections and buy the game for me. Or your game is dead and I'm gonna pick Sorcery, I'm gonna pick Meadow Zoo, I'm gonna pick something else. Cryptade with a K, right? Like you're not special to me. Hey, you got a great game, but you ain't special because there are these other games who approach me all the time. So I'm sure that in some way he's got some contract. He's a smart guy and he's in real estate and, and restaurants and he works with the government. Governments have contracts, right? With their vendors. 
They have serious amounts of money in these contracts where every clause could be the difference. Real estate has a lot of contracts. Like it's all legal. I'm sure he has a good attorney and that attorney made sure that this contract was ironclad and he would get special treatment the rest of his existence, no matter what. They couldn't do anything to him. Even if he didn't like the direction of the game. The drama, very simply said, was this uh, content creator who was one of the largest content creators, if not the largest organic content creator for Flesh and Blood. He was always putting down magic, putting down magic, saying Flesh and Blood better than magic, Flesh and Blood better than magic, for like over two years. He is one of the people who sold his magic collection, which had a reserve list, which had older cards that are quite valuable today for Flesh and Blood. Um, and uh, you know, I did follow all the people who did it and it was all of them. It was all, made, made all the flesh and blood content. They came from magic. You have to understand, they came from magic. They didn't like the way magic was heading. So they sold off their magic collection. Many of them, I think like this Louis character who runs the, uh, the channel, he had a magic collection that leads me to believe he played magic for many, many years, maybe even a decade plus because of the cards he has in his collection. They are reminiscent of an old school player. The reserve list, uh, the type of cards he has. Uh, so he sells off his collection and then starts pumping the flesh and blood hype, uh, which is what everyone's doing, including Rudy Chan at that time. Uh, he starts a podcast made a Zuby with you for another person called George. George was an early adopter as well. He actually purchased the fleshandblood.com domain before the people who made the game, which is really ridiculous that even had the uh, potential of happening, but to actually have that happen where the old, the creator of the game, James White, or LSS, the, the, the game, does not purchase the domain for their game is very weird. You know, it's like you're, you knew that that was the name of your game. Why did you not purchase the domain? Because it would have cost you 99 cents for that year. You could have held on to it. If nothing happened, fine, let, let it go back in the wild. But my gosh, it's a very valuable domain for you. Maybe not for everyone else, but for just you, the game makers of the game. So he was an early adopter. He supposedly has a giant player base of competitive flesh and blood players. And um, they basically said, hey, we don't like what you've been saying on this podcast. We're going to cancel you from the gem program, which my understanding is like the WPN, they give up gem points. So the WPN gives up Planeswalker points and you can use these points to get buys and you know competitive play or something. And yeah, so now he's removing the banners. He's upset, you know, and then Louie's upset too, which is, uh, which is the guy who owns the channel. And then Louis made a video recently saying that he's going to change his flesh and blood channel, which demean magic players and magic the gathering into a magic the gathering channel. <laughs> oh man, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it's uh, very dramatic. And then now because he said, he said that and he said some bad things about LSS and James White, the uh, flesh and blood community is coming after him. Like these, some type of, uh, he just, said rug pull and then crypto bro was like what no 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 we gotta silence them and uh it's very entertaining um i am very curious to see what the end result is because at the end of the day like how do you change a flesh and blood channel to a magic it's never been done this way it's always been done the opposite way when you're a magic the gathering person and now you go into flesh and blood now um and he's not the only one i watched another guy his name was like I forget what his, he supposedly owned a store too, and they basically banned him as well. And he's been on a rampage against, I don't know, remember, Cryptid TCG games or something like that. And then people have been against him too. So right now there is a divide. And the divide is quite interesting because it was created by Flesh and Blood. So it wasn't like a natural divide. It was like Flesh and Blood's like, oh, these are the bad stores, guys. And the store's like, what? And they have no choice because, again, when you're on a naughty list, or you know, are you you are not sponsored? You, I think, a lot of the tension between the people who are. My understanding of it, I, I believe I at least believe this is true, 
is that people who were early adopters of flesh and blood, they expected to be treated like Rudy Chan. You know, direct printing, play mats of Rudy, you know, every month. Play mats or promo cards of Rudy, you know, whatever it is that Rudy gets, which I'm not even certain, you know, maybe it could be equity, maybe some type of long-term contract, they expected to be rewarded as well. This uh, George guy who owns the store that got, you know, block, I, I mean, block, I don't even know what it is, right? The gem program, I don't know what it is. Sounds like WPN. He was one of the early adopters and promoters of the game too, but he didn't have the reach that Rudy had. Therefore, Rudy was treated on a different level at the same level that Star City Games and Channel 5 are treated at because they run all the big events. And Louis and George and none of the other people were at this level, which makes sense. And that's why Rudy pumps the game so much because he's at a totally different level than anyone else uh, as an individual who has no employees, right? You think about Channel 5 all, how many employees, writers, content creators they even had, right? Um, even the content creators for Flesh and Blood, how many of them were sponsored by Channel 5 all? It was a lot of them, a handful of them. And then you think about Star City Games, how big that company is, you know, with all their employees. So Rudy got in good. He got in good. But that does create jealousy. And I think a lot of people are noticing this now that they cannot compete with Rudy when it comes to selling Flesh and Blood. Is it the promo? Is it the package? No, it's the price. Just like people complain about Channel Fireball when Channel Fireball was fire sailing, right? Uh, before it got bought out, it's probably because that was around maybe even after you take fees and credit card fees, shipping and so on. That's probably around the cost. They just want to recoup some money back, right? So they're not paying. So Rudy Chan, I'm almost certain Alpha Investment does not pay the same amount as a distributor. And then therefore he doesn't obviously doesn't pay the same amount as your local game store for these boxes. And he's able to get more of them. He's able to talk to James White directly at a meeting. Um, so there's a special relationship there and that creates a anti-competitive environment. Because any store who carries flesh and blood that dares you no know, compare with, compete with Rudy is going to lose. Like if you're buying a product for one dollar for a box, and the other guy's buying a product for fifty-five dollars a box, fifty dollars a box, there's no way you can win against the guy who's buying it for one. If you're getting a product that you get maybe ten boxes of first edition, this other guy gets ten thousand of them. No way you win. Those are hypothetical numbers. Those are extreme numbers. I'm just telling you how it is. You know, even if you had a $2 advantage on a box, you're still the cheapest on Amazon. You're still the cheapest on eBay. You're still the cheapest on Patreon. Because you you have the advantage, right? Like unless you seriously mess something up, maybe your shipping rates are different. You don't you don't have your shipping down exactly. Um, it It's hard to mess up that type of competitive advantage where you are direct from the person making the game. So yeah, uh, very interesting. Um, and I think to me it's interesting because this guy was a, you know, he hit 7,000. He was doing very well in Flesh and Blood. He had a popular podcast for Flesh and Blood, right? And he was still making videos and doing charts and doing finance in Flesh and Blood almost every day. He had quit his job for Flesh and Blood. He had sold his Magic the Gathering collection, which in my opinion is a very nice collection. I would have easily snapped it up. Lots of really good reserve list cards, lots of cards that he'll never get back. There's no way he gets his binder back once it's sold. When it's one of those collections when, when you sell it, you know you're not gonna get those back. It's not gonna come back. Um, so then he bought Flesh and Blood. So he, this is a very dedicated person to Flesh and Blood who's been making videos for over two years. And now he's gonna make his Flesh and Blood channel a magic channel. We'll see. I mean, it's it's very fascinating. I, I'm here for it. You know, you want to do a podcast uh, about magic? I'm I'm down for that. You know, I have a lot of things that I would like to ask him. Um, I think he has a lot of children too. He's got like ooh, at least two babies, three babies. So like, uh, the way that he's phrased it in his new video is he's selling his flesh and blood collection to fund a year, I guess, of seeing where this goes. 
Um, I believe he has a store too. I know the other guy, George, has a store. And, you know, and, and the people coming out of the woodworks either supporting him or defending him or, or attacking him and saying, hey, you got greedy, you did this, you did that. Um, hmm, very interesting. It reminds me of the good old days in Magic where I got banned from Magic and I told them I was going to sue them, so they unbanned me immediately. <laughs> or they say, oh, we're not banning you. This is just a warning. I was like, no, that's not what the email said. You know, the email said I was banned. No, 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 no. sorry, sorry, it's a warning. Um, it reminds me of good days. So I guess Flesh and Blood is having that type of, uh, that type of experience right now where people are getting band hammered, which is what Wizard Coast did too. So, hmm.